I'm on record as being a huge fan of the Mitsubishi Evolution. Even at the end of its life when the sports car was overmatched by newer competition, it offered a visceral experience that was really unlike anything else that was on sale. This is not a Mitsubishi, but after a few days behind the wheel of the 2016 Ford Focus RS, I think I know which turbocharged monster I'm about to fall in love with next. How does it look? The five-door Focus has always been an attractive vehicle, and this subtle go-fast treatment does nothing but enhance it. The big wheels are, of course, a dead giveaway that this isn't a standard compact, as is the rear wing. Not quite a sleeper, but it'll take a Ford enthusiast to know exactly what this fetching blue hatch is all about. How's the storage? Now, car guys famously love hot hatches because we can make the argument that they're really pretty practical day to day. This large rear cargo area augments that argument nicely. Again, like the standard Focus, there's adequate room for beverages, sunglasses, and a deep console for your phone or other odds and ends. There are also a couple of weird pockets next to each of the back seats that we're not exactly sure what to do with. Is it roomy? The biggest downside to the interior is that if you're too wide, these fat bolstered racing seats prop you up a little bit higher and result in a feeling that headroom is kind of thin. If I were skinnier, perhaps it wouldn't be a problem. Beyond that, the back seats are usable in a pinch or for storage, but adults shouldn't sit back there for long. How does the interior feel? Now, my feeling from behind the wheel is absolutely dominated by these aggressive Recaro seats. They've got high bolsters and they're sort of narrow, which is great when I'm flogging the car through corners, but it's less good when I'm just driving the car home from work. Is it well equipped? The RS is stocked with goodies and most of them are functional for the enthusiast driver. Of course, that means an all wheel drive system and a 350 horsepower, 2.3 liter turbo engine as well as Brembo brakes and the RS selectable drive mode system. Everything and more you'd want for a day of hot lapping and tire smoking. How's the infotainment system? This is the latest generation of Sync and it's pretty good. The touchscreen is responsive and the software easy to use. Only the blase graphics are slightly disappointing. Is it fun to drive? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the car is super fun to drive. Woo! <laughs> uh, especially when there are jumps involved. All right, so you probably have heard already that this is the Focus with 350 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque, all-wheel drive, and something stupid called drift mode. And I say stupid, <laughs> in the most loving way possible. The car is an out and out hooligan. Uh, <laughs> the handling is kind of impeccable. I haven't really found a road that can uh, unflap it yet when you're pushing it really hard. There's way, way more grip than I could ever possibly use on a public road, partially because the tires are almost like cut slicks. They're super aggressive, but the all wheel drive and the torque vectoring works super well to deliver the power as you're going out of the corners. The steering is really precise. Uh, it's a very tight direct rack, and it's just super easy to drive it fast and well on a good road. Is it a good daily driver? Well, before I answer that, hold on, let me just get it out of drift mode first. That seems only appropriate to put it back in normal. 
The thing is, even in normal mode, uh, nothing really happens that tamps down the craziness of this car, right? So it's fine. You can completely get by with it, especially if you're somebody who just loves it, you sort of want to make it work, right? But I did a lot of commuting in the car on the highway, and frankly, it's just not very good there. The tires and wheels are really aggressive. The ride is very stiff. and. It just doesn't come together really well when you're just in stop and go traffic and doing sort of average boring things. I'm gonna say it a different way because I love this car so much. The fact that it's not a good daily driver makes it more exciting to me. These days, even performance cars are sort of meant to be good at everything, and that's cool, but it makes them less special. And this, I think, harkens back to a wilder time when cars were just a little bit more fun. How's the fuel economy? This is a car whose real-world fuel economy seems entirely dependent on how much Red Bull the driver has had today. The official ratings aren't great to start, 25 highway and 19 city. And you can easily ruin those poor official numbers by using drift mode and your right foot aggressively. How much is it? This super limited edition car supposedly starts at $35,900. But if you're lucky enough to buy one, expect to pay at least the $40,255 that our tester stickers at. That pricing is entirely in concert with the Golf R and WRX STI for a car that's far more sought after right now. What are the negatives? This car is bananas all of the time. It never really feels switched off to me, no matter what normal mode tries to say. So if you buy one as a perfect weekend car or a track toy, great. But if you buy one as a daily driver, expect to be perpetually caffeinated. Who should buy it? If you loved the Evo 10, then you're gonna adore this Focus RS. Really, anybody who can appreciate a super hatchback on the bleeding edge of performance is gonna kill to get this car in their garage. Hey, if you guys like the Bitch and James Hunt t-shirt I'm wearing, you should check out the link here for motorstore.com. It's our sister site and they've got all kinds of cool racing gear. They've got F1 stuff, Ferrari, Puma, all sorts of racing drivers, jackets, hoodies, t-shirts, cool stuff. Check it out.